completed on February 26, 1940 by Frank Miller, the Miller was part of an entertainment district that included the Imperial, Rialto, and Majesca theaters. Unfortunately, in the early 1980s, the Miller screened its last movie due to loss of traffic downtown. But today, things are changing for our city by the Savannah. New, local, and unique businesses are filling once empty stores, and people from all walks of life are coming back downtown again to enjoy the history, architecture, and culture. The time is perfect for an entertainment district once again. We can all thank Peter Knox for saving the Miller Theater. He acquired the building in 2005 with a mind to see it reopen. He uh, stabilized the building with a new roof and uh, he began to consider his options. It was in 2008 that, uh, that he graciously offered the Miller as a gift to the symphony to use as its home, performing home. And at that point, I was asked by the symphony to form a study group to consider the cost and the feasibility of reopening the Miller as a symphony home and a performing center. Peter realized the historical significance and the uniqueness of the building and wanted the building to be able to contribute substantially long-term to the city of Augusta and felt that Symphony Orchestra Augusta could be a good partner in that enterprise. As, uh, as our study progressed, we made an important discovery. The Miller Project was more than finding a home for the symphony. It was something much bigger than that. At that point, we began to consider how the symphony might shape the Miller to become a performing arts center with an emphasis on music education. And that led to our study group's final opinion that the symphony should not only perform at the Miller, but should be prepared to present national or regional groups, other arts groups to Augusta. And should all, we also recommended that the symphony use its new home as a permanent place to create a music institute to teach and to further the love of music. Imagine an entertainment district with the Imperial holding an audience of just under 900. The Miller hosting larger performances requiring seating up to 1300. The Bell Auditorium holding 2600 and finally the James Brown Arena for audiences over 4000. Today we are so close and with the revitalization of the Miller Theater, Augusta would have a state-of-the-art performing hall larger than the Imperial, but smaller than the Bell Auditorium, able to accommodate small intimate shows or large national acts all in one location with acoustics that bring music and performances to life. The future is in our hands. The Miller can be what it was before. Downtown can have an entertainment district and the CSRA will be the beneficiary. The arts have so much power. If you can develop uh, your town around the arts the way we have, it is a very, very positive highway of developing. There are a lot of touring bands that, that I think um, would, would love to come through that just aren't quite big enough for the Bell, um, but too big for the Imperial. And a lot of those shows we've done and we've had to take them outside and we've had to do some other things. And so to have a venue that we could look at and say, hey, this could work for some of our shows, it's just great. And I just, you know, I, just the atmosphere of it, just going in it today is, is just incredible. You have these world famous artists that have come out of Augusta, such as Jesse Norman in the opera world, such as Brenda Lee in the pop world, such as Lady Antebellum, such as James Brown. These are artists who are known throughout the world and will always be known throughout the world. But where are they from? Augusta, Georgia. I want Augusta to be a destination for the arts and for artists. I think we're moving towards that reputation. That reputation's increasing every day, and this will really help take us to the next level.